welcome back to my country craft corner how in the world are you guys doing today it is so good to see you again and thank you so so much for stopping back by to see what i'm up to and what i'm up to today is to tell you all about bobby at perpetualribbons.com and all about her facebook live that she's fixing to do tomorrow night and I will give you all the pertinent information in the description box, but here is her little uh, flyer that she put up in my Facebook group. And if y'all remember, before we went on vacation, Bobby sent me a whole big box, a beautiful, beautiful big box of fall ribbon. So today I thought I would try to help Bobby out a little bit and to bring your guys' attention back into crafting and stuff here on my channel because I've been vacationing and showing you about our vacation and whatnot. But I thought it would make you three funky bows today, uh, two of which will be only nine loop funky bows and one will be a 12 loop funky bow. But I wanted to utilize the ribbon that she sent me and I wanted to show you how I put together funky bows and how I choose the ribbons and so on and so forth. I get tons and tons of questions about this. So I haven't made a funky bow in a long time here on my, well, in a while on my channel here. Anyway, I thought I would take this opportunity to show you these funky bows and to give you an idea of how I put my ribbons together for a funky bow. And also to encourage you to go and check out Bobby at her Facebook Live tomorrow evening. As you can see, it says, uh, it's seven o'clock Denver time, which I believe is mountain time, which is two hours behind me. In other words, for me here, it'll be nine o'clock. There it'll be seven. Uh, in California, I guess it would be six. Middle of the country like Texas will be eight. And for me over here on the East Coast and those of us who live over here, it would be nine o'clock. But anyway, I encourage you guys to, to take a peek at Bobby's Facebook Live. Let me so first let me read what, what is on her flyer here. It says, hello everyone. Perpetual Ribbons first ever Facebook Live sale on July the 22nd at 7 p.m. Denver time. Christmas slash autumn ribbon kits. She's gonna be offering kits. D. Stevens ribbon and everything in between. There will be something for everyone. Discounted items and a few giveaways. You must place an order to be eligible for a free giveaway. And she says, I think we'll have a blast. So come and join the fun. It sounds like fun. It does sound like fun. So let me uh, shut my computer down here and I wanna turn my camera and we're gonna make us some, a few funky bows and I'm gonna show you some of the beautiful ribbons she sent to me and how I've chosen to put it together to make these funky bows. All right, all right, here we go. What you need to make a funky bow is a pair of scissors need a tape measure or some kind of, it can do a ruler or a yardstick too, but some kind of measuring device. And you need ribbon, obviously, and you need a pipe cleaner. All right, so the first one we're going to do is a nine loop funky bow. And as you can see here, I have the three ribbons I'm going to utilize with this bow cut at 22 inches long. Each strip of ribbon is cut at 22 inches long. That's how long I've cut all of my ribbon. That's how, how long I cut all my funky bow ribbon, my ribbon for my funky bows anymore. I, that I've really settled in to 22 inches long. It's just about perfect for me. And you can see these two ribbons I got from Bobby. This ribbon I've had, I got it from uh, Amazon, I believe but the other ribbons I got from Bobby at perpetualribbons.com and all of the rest of the ribbons, as you can see here piled up that I'm gonna be using are all from Bobby at perpetualribbons.com. So, uh, but like I said, I have three strips of each type of ribbon, each pattern of ribbon cut up at 22 inches long. I did want to take a moment, if you're interested in any of the ribbon that I do, I am gonna hold it up. Please pause your computer and take a screenshot and you can see the SKU number and everything on the ribbon. So that's how I'll work this. I'll just hold it up there and you can pause your computer and write down the information or take a screenshot. So you'll be ready to order if you would like to. So there we go. Okay, as I said, Bobby sent me these two ribbons 
and I have one piece of ribbon here that I'm going to add in at the end for two tails. So again, this is a nine loop funky bow. And the way I chose these two ribbons to go together, Bobby didn't necessarily choose these ribbons to go together. I'm sure she did when she was packing the box. But I chose these particular ribbons to go together because you can see the orange really matches. And then with the buffalo plaid in the back or buffalo check in the back is why I pulled out the buffalo check. So I, I match my ribbons up for various reasons. Color to me is extremely important. You will also not see me mix plaids or checks and stripes. Very rarely I have done it, but very rarely will I do that. I would rather pull out a solid than I would mix a stripe with a check. That just goes back to my childhood as probably showing my age <laughs> a lot, I'll be 60. Uh, that you just didn't, you know, in the 60s and 70s, you just didn't mix stripes and checks. That's just my psyche. If you like tri sti stripes and checks mixed, I encourage you to go ahead and do it. But anyway, to make a nine loop funky bow, we're going to pick up our first piece of ribbon, first strip of ribbon, and fold it completely in half and make it flat. Don't leave it like bumped up like that because you won't get the, the size loop that you need. Make it flat. I'm going to make all of these loops six inches. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to go to six inches on my measuring tape. Pick it up at that point and I'm going to put, pinch it together, a kind of accordion pinching it together. And there you can see that is our first loop and our nine loop funky bow. Okay, you go with our second strip a ribbon that will become our second loop in our funky bow, go to six inches. And now this time in a nine loop, an odd numbered looped bow, we're going to flip that ribbon around or that loop around and point it down from center, my thumb being the center of this bow. Okay, and we're gonna go to the third strip. And I'm going to kind of do these kind of fast because I am making three bows and I don't want y'all to sit here all day long, go to six inches pick it up, accordion it together. And there we have our first three loops and our nine loop funky bow. So I'm going to continue on with this pattern that I've set up. I'm going through the pattern of ribbon the same way each time and flipping the loop up or down from center, alternating times that I add it, okay? And pinch it together in there. Go to that back tail and twist. The reason I twist the back tail is at least at this point in time, all of the right sides are, are, are uh, pointing in the same direction. They'll all get messed up and, and turned around in the bow, but that's okay. At least at this time, they're, they're pointing kind of where I want them to go. <laughs> Six inches, point that loop up from center. And at this point, this loop or this bow is gonna start to kind of fall back into the crook of my finger. I'm gonna let it do that. Also, I let up when I'm picking up the next piece of ribbon, I let I let up, and you see that? And I don't squeeze it like a, so tight that I'm shaking, you know? I let up, I concentrate on relaxing my hand. You will get a cramp in your hand when you first start doing this, but I, and I do not use a bow maker. You guys never have, and I probably never will unless I just can't, you know, manipulate the ribbon anymore. Just because I like the way my bows work out and I don't need to use them, so I, I've never purchased one. So anyway, here we go. Next one in the pattern, six inches, flatten it down, point it up from center, and twist that back tail, and then down from center, accordion it in there, Twist and the last one in the bow, six inches up from center. Twist that back tail. Now I'm gonna go over here and you can see I have uh, one strip of ribbon. I'm actually gonna cut it in half and I'm gonna turn the Sorry, turn the pumpkins in one direction. I really didn't worry about it in the bow proper. Sometimes I will, but this time I didn't. 
but I want the tail, I want the pumpkins and the tail to be headed in the same direction. So what I'm gonna do is add this tail in this way, kind of to the back of the bow. I wanna add it in right side up against the back of the bow and kind of just catch it. And then I wanna add this side, the back of the bow again, and kind of just lay it in there and accordion it in. And that way my tails will be laying in the correct direction. Get my pipe cleaner, I'm gonna lay it over the top. So I got a little crazy here. Over the top and find the center of the pipe cleaner and kind of hold it with my thumb and pull the bottom around the bottom and the top around the top of the bow. I want to squeeze the ribbon as much as I can. I wanna get these other fingers up as close as I can to the bow, wrap this hand around, squeeze and twist. Twist, twist the bow, twist the pipe cleaner, twist both. Okay, and then we have our start of a nine loop funky bow. All right, now the most important part of any bow is of course the fluffing. And as far as the tails are concerned, you can see some are coming up and wanting to mix in with the, with the loops and that's perfectly fine. If you don't like that, you can push them to the back of the bow if you don't mind that, leave them alone. If you want them cut shorter, the tails, you can cut them shorter, you can leave them long, whatever you wanna do. You can pull and yank on this bow as much as you want to make it look like you want it to look. And remember, if it is pretty to your eye, it doesn't have to be pretty to my eye. If it's pretty to your eye and you're putting, unless you're selling your bows, you know, and you are making it to somebody else's stipulation, if your, bow, if your bow is pretty to your eye, then that's all that matters. It doesn't matter if it's pretty to anybody else, you know. Uh, but these are just some hints there you can see. And you can use this on any number of things. You can use this on a wreath. I'm actually gonna tie one onto this lantern, my last one that I'm making, this blue one. I would say when I'm doing, when I'm working with these ribbons too, this is a very traditional uh, fall looking bow to me as, the next one will be a little bit out of the traditional because of the teal in it. But I, I think this is a very traditional colored uh, fall bow that would probably match the majority of folks's, you know, uh, fall decor and what they think of when they think of fall decor. I think this is super pretty, super classic. And again, it could go on a lantern like that. It could go on this on a wreath. It could go like on the edge of a curtain. It could go on the, uh, the uh, side of a picture or the corner of a picture and you can make a swag with like pumpkins and flowers and you know run a little bit of the buffalo check through it. I mean, the sky is the limit for these bows, you guys. Uh, you know, I, I love the funky bow. I think it is just an amazing little, um, bow that you can do so much with. So anyway, there's number one, my example. I love it. I think it's super pretty. And we're going to, as I said, this is a nine loop funky bow. Let's set this one aside. And now I'm going to make a 12 loop funky bow, but I'm gonna make it a little different than some of the other 12 loop funky bows I've made in the past. And I'll tell you why. Okay, first let me show you the ribbons that I'm using for this bow. Again, all these are from Perpetual Ribbons. And again, take a screenshot if you like it. Kind of a teal, that's beautiful in person. And then kind of a light orange. This is lighter than what I used in that other bow. See the difference? This is what I'm using in this bow. So, okay, now to explain this, and this is going to be a little different than my other 12 loop funky bows, uh, but for this one, I am using three different kinds of ribbon, but as you can see, I have four piles, and two piles of the ribbon are the same. 
And the reason I did this this way this time is because I really like that scarecrow. I think he's super cute. And I really want wanted more of the scarecrow to be represented in the bow, if you will, than I did for the solid colors. I have found that sometimes, and you'll see when I do this one, I, I only, this is gonna be a nine loop funky bow. Well, anyway, we'll get back to that. But anyway, I'm, I'm gonna see how this turns out. This is the first time I've ever made one like this. So we're gonna see together how it works out and see if I like it. Uh, again, though, with a 12 loop or an even numbered loop bow, we're gonna go all the way through the pattern and we're gonna be pointing the, the loop up and then down each time we go through the pattern. So instead of switching directions on the loop each time, as we did in the nine loop, we're going to go all the way through the pattern and keep all four loops pointed in the same direction. Then the next four loops are gonna be pointed down, which will be eight loops. And then the next four, which will be 12, will be pointed up. Okay, so let me show you. Okay, so again, we're gonna take the first one, flatten it out, go to six inches, pinch it together at that point. And go to that back tail and twist, just like we did before. So now we're gonna go all the way through the pattern. Now you can see these scarecrows are definitely, I'm gonna turn them up over so that they're gonna be pointed facing up. Six inches, pinch it together, twist that back tail. Next, in the pattern of ribbon, go to six inches, point that loop up from center and accordion it in there and twist. And then the next one, six inches and then flip it over so that the scarecrows are gonna be pointed up six inches and pinch it together, just like that. All right, so there are our first four loops in our 12 loop funky bow. Okay, now we're gonna start the pattern again. This time, we're gonna turn the loop down from center as we go through the pattern. This time, scarecrow should be facing the way I want him to go. Yeah, <laughs> facing up. See, I can see already I'm liking it because I'm seeing more of the scarecrows and the colored ribbon is just more of an accent ribbon than it is kind of taking over the, the bow down from center. And three more down from center. Okay, now there we go. We have eight loops added in to our funky bow. So we got one more time through the pattern. And this time, we're gonna point that loop up from center again. Next, I think I already turned this over or not, did I? Up from center. back and twist and you can see the the ribbon is all the way back in the crook of my hand I'm not cramping though because I'm letting up every time I pick up another loop I'm not holding this like my hand is shaking and I, I'm gonna drop it at any second but drop it at any second we can just start over again it's not a big deal so okay and twist and one more and pinch it together. So there we have all 12 strips 
added in in our 12 loop funky bow. We are not going to add uh, a tails to this one because I don't even know where I'm gonna put this. <laughs> I can always add them later if I want. But again, with the pipe cleaner, take it around, move that hand around and squeeze and really get your hand up behind there as close as you can to the back of the bow and twist. Twist, 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 twist. Now that's a hot mess, isn't it? But I think you'll see when I go to fluff that these colored, the solid color ribbon are gonna kind of take a back seat to the scarecrows. And you can see some of the scarecrows are upside down. That's okay. I started them in the right direction. <laughs> and I can always, it doesn't matter. I'm just anal retentive when I go to first make it. But I really, I do like this because you can really see the scarecrow ribbon more. And the orange and the teal are kind of taken kind of a back seat out in the back. What I love about funky bows too is that they are a thick bow. See how thick that bow is? So if I wanted to add, if I wanted to get some berries or some little cornucopias or uh, some hay, for instance, you know, or sunflowers to go with this hat and just put them in and glue them into this bow, I have plenty of oomph with this bow to add things to it, to hang it on a lantern, you know, or on a wreath or whatever, to, to pull in whatever other accents I'm using on whatever, wherever I'm gonna hang this. You know, that your, your bow can be just your starting point in a, in a vignette, you know? I love this, I think this is pretty. I think it turned out really pretty. So, and the, and the teal kind of, and the orange is a nice pop but it takes kind of a background. And I tell you, I really honestly don't quit fluffing until I get this where I'm gonna, you know, where it's gonna live. And then I may wanna pull one of the oranges back up, you know, into the body of the bow more or, you know, whatever. But it's it's hard for me to, to show you exactly where I'm gonna put this right now because I really don't know either one of these. I just don't know <laughs> where they'll go. So, but anyway, these are, I'm making these just for your own, uh, just to show you guys, just for, uh, and to help Bobby out and to show you Bobby's ribbon made up as pretty as it can be made. Look how beautiful. I'm telling you her ribbon, the, the quality of her ribbon is unsurpassed, you guys. Every ribbon I've ever made, every bow I've ever made with her ribbon is just stunning. It is, I mean, not because I make it stunning, it's because the, if you have a good quality product, you're gonna have a good quality outcome. And there you go, you know? Here you go with right, the, so you know, a 12 loop funky bow using, but using six of the scarecrows and and three each of the colors, and I love it. And, and you can really see the scarecrow ribbon, you know, throughout the bow, where sometimes it kind of gets lost, the patterned ribbon. I love it. If I wanted to, instead of using this, you know, the three other scarecrow ribbons, I could have added a plaid. That would have been pretty. A plaid or a check, you know, that would have been pretty. So, but I love this. I love the way it worked out. So there's that one. Okay, my last one, and dare I say where my decor will be going, uh, is this beautiful blue, and cream, I just love this. I just think this is so pretty and I just wanna make a nine loop funky bow. I don't wanna make, uh, and I am gonna tie it on here just to show you how to tie something on a, on a lantern. But again, we're just gonna switch directions of the loop every time we pick one up and add it to the body of the bow. And we're gonna add two little strips, one for tails and one to be used to tie the bow onto the lantern and I'll show you that. So let's get started here. Pull this out to 22 inches again. I'm gonna make this fast, you guys, because I just don't want you, I, I just hate to take you real long here. Six inches, pinch it together and go back and twist. Now, this time we're gonna flip the, the loop the other direction, because again, this is a nine loop funky bow. Flip it. Again, oh, I forgot to show you the ribbon. I'll do that at the end. Sorry, oh my goodness, I promise, I won't forget. Ah, what a ding dong, I'm a ding bat, sorry. I'm gonna go ahead and make the bow. <laughs> anyway, okay, here we go. 
The third one, this cream, y'all, is gorgeous in person. And it matches this ribbon beautifully. It could not match better. And this blue, it's not quite a cobalt, but it's not quite a navy. It just, it, it's a beautiful color blue, this one. Okay, here we go. Down from center. This is really thick, beautiful ribbon. This is not um, as easy to work with, but boy, it makes up into a gorgeous bow. So there we go. We've got all our loops added in to our nine loop funky bow. Now, before we tie it together, I wanna take a shorter piece, but one that will fit around the lantern, and I wanna put it right on the back of the bow, it's right side up. I wanna add it in to the back of the bow because I want, when I tie the bow onto the lantern, I want the this piece of ribbon to pull it really tight onto the lantern. So this is the one that has to go on first. And then I'm gonna add one in for, so I can add some tails. I'm actually going to add that more into the bottom like I did the uh, ribbons. Okay, so then I get my pipe cleaner, put my pipe cleaner over the top, pull the top around the, or bottom around the bottom and the top around the top. And pull it really tight again, get those fingers up as close as you can, twist around and pinch and twist, 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 twist. All right, and here we go. Start fluffing. one got a little bit crazy on me. Pull it down a little bit. I might like this bow a little bit better with more of the pumpkin ribbon in it. But I will manipulate it till I get it the way I want it. And pull that cream in the background. There, that's better. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and tie it on this lantern here. And then I can manipulate it some more. But you can see here are the two back strips that I put on. Let me pull you up and over here. I'm not gonna, usually I would cut the uh, pipe cleaners off, but I'm not going to because I don't know whether this is where this bow is gonna live. But for today, it's gonna live here. Move that in the back. And I just want to take those two pieces of ribbon that I put into the back of the bow. I'm gonna do my best here to get you situated so you can see what I'm doing. And I'm literally going to tie this bow around this lantern. The reason I don't use the pipe cleaner to do this is because you, it won't hold the bow onto the lantern well enough. It tends to wanna to slip off. And I'll just smush that down in there a little too wide. And I want to pull this really tight so I can pull the bow right up against the lantern. Okay. And I've got my two tails coming down the side, which I can manipulate them to be to come down the side of the lantern like this. And what I normally will do, I would put a piece of greenery or pip berry garland or something in here and make a swag. Or you could just tie the bow on and just put some cream pumpkins in. They sell cream velvet pumpkins, you know. That would be really pretty with this. Or, you know, my goodness, the sky's the limit for this again. You can do whatever you want and make it however you want to 
you know, make it. And I'm not gonna sit here and, and mess with this too much today. Y'all get the gist of where I'm going with this. Of course, I can't stop messing with it because I want it to look beautiful. I'm not gonna cut the tails, but there you go. You get the gist of it. This is a couple of tails here. If I wanted a center loop, I could just kind of loop that around and make it a center loop. You know, don't be afraid to do different things and to manipulate them and to pull and yank on the, uh, the ribbons and get them to go and sit where you want them to sit until it's pretty, again, to your eye. And it doesn't have to be beautiful to everybody's eye. It just has to be pretty to your eye if you're going to put it in your house. All right? So that turned out pretty. And here is this ribbon. Let me give you this real quick. That's the pumpkin ribbon. And the cream. and the blue. Super, super, super pretty. Maybe one day we'll come back and I'll maybe leave that on that blue lantern and we'll, we'll augment this and we'll put some cream pumpkins in there or berries, pip berries or something to, uh, to jazz it up a little bit. But boy, that's pretty. All right, so let me turn my camera here and I'll be right back. I'll talk with you some more. Okie dokie, I'm back. <laughs> and I'm really happy with how these three bows uh, turned out. They, they really worked out pretty. Uh, you can see this one, this is a nine loop. This is the 12 loop. The 12 loop is bigger and bulkier. And I really like adding the three extra pieces of the scarecrow ribbon to pull out you know, away from the, the, the solid ribbon. I really like that. Uh, I do have a funky bow cheat sheet. It always linked in the description box of every video. I have it in a blog that I wrote about my time with the Salvation Army. I did a, a class, a funky bow class. And I showed them how to make lantern toppers and how to make funky bows and so on. But I have a cheat sheet for a 9 loop, a 12 loop, a 16 loop, and a 20 loop funky bow. So I also have a Bow Making 101 playlist uh, on my channel that not only goes through all of those funky bows, but also teaches you how to, I teach you how to do a tiered bow and I teach you how to do a round bow. So do check that playlist out. I'll try to, I, it might be list, it might be, I think it is linked in all of my uh, description boxes too, but I'll make sure it is. So anyway, check Bobby out tomorrow night. Today is Wednesday, tomorrow night, Thursday, July 22nd on Facebook. And I'll like her channel there and her Facebook page. And then you'll get the notification that she's gone live. And I'll give you the link for her blog. I'll give you the link, of course, to her website. And, you know, give you many ways to communicate with Bobby ask her questions. She's very, very sweet, very willing to answer you back, uh, very generous with her time and with her, uh, her communication. Her communication still skills are unsurpassed. She bends over backwards for her customers, you guys. So I encourage you to try her out. Her ribbon is well-priced. Trust me, I've been buying ribbon for many, many, many years. Her ribbon is well-priced and the quality of her ribbon is unsurpassed. And I'll tell you another thing, if she has a, a, a bolt of ribbon that she doesn't think is up to her standards, she'll tell you, she'll say, you know what? This isn't quite as good as maybe this might be or something like that. Don't hesitate to reach out to her. Don't hesitate, because she will love to, to talk you through. She will help you put ribbons together, cut ribbon colors together. She's fabulous at that. She's a wonderful lady, you guys. So I encourage you, to check Bobby out at perpetualribbons.com. Check out our pre-Facebook Live tomorrow night. And 
just see what product she has to offer and listen to her talk. She's such a sweet lady. You'll really enjoy her. I know you will really enjoy her. So, yay. Yay for Bobby. And good for you, Bobby, for, for getting up the nerve to do a Facebook Live. You're going to do fine. Don't worry. It'll all work out. It'll all work out. And if you make a mistake here or there, that's okay. You're human. I don't ever make mistakes. <laughs> I am kidding. I make mistakes all the time. You know I do. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> so... Uh, but never be afraid, afraid to try, Bobby. Good for you for stepping out of your safe box. You know, sometimes we ladies, we need to step out. We ladies and gentlemen, not just ladies, but gentlemen, anybody, anybody who's watching. Sometimes needs to push those walls and to, and, to, and to expand our worlds a little bit, right? I knew nothing about face or about YouTube when I first started, you guys. I didn't know too much about editing. I didn't know too much about videoing. I was scared to death. I was like the deer in the headlights you know, for the first however long, however many months, you know, you just get, and the more you do it, the better you get at it. And the more comfortable, I won't say the better, but the more, I won't say I've gotten better, but I will say I've gotten more comfortable. I will say I've gotten more comfortable. But anyway, that is it. You guys, I don't know whether I have too much mischief with Maverick to share with you because <laughs> we are all still kind of recovering uh, if I can find some more beach pictures or some, I'll throw some pictures up of, of, of our little boy, of our little grandson Maverick here at the end to some, to some zippy music. <laughs> and I think with that, I'm going to go ahead and close this out. I'm sure this video is kind of long. So I am going to go ahead and close this out. I should be back on Friday. I haven't gotten a lot of questions, but, uh, and I, don't, I haven't gotten anything from my mailbox yet. I do not know whether I will by Friday. I do have a few things to share with you uh, clothes-wise. I bought a couple of things from Amazon, a couple of things from Avenue in preparation for our next trip. So, you know, I'll show you those and answer any questions or just chit chat with you for a little while for our Friday video. Don't know, have a earthly, one earthly idea of what I'm doing next week. For Monday and Wednesday, I'll only be able to bring you probably two videos next week and then phew, I'll be off again <laughs> for a week or so. So I'm doing my best here, you guys. I'm doing my best to bring you some content. I missed you guys, as I said. It feels so good to be able to sit here and chat with you guys. Even though you can't chat back with me, it still feels good because I know you're watching and I know you watch with love and I appreciate that. I appreciate that so very much. All right, I'm gonna go into my final words and say... I hope that all is well with everyone. And for those of you who may be struggling or suffering with a catastrophic illness or chronic pain, I hope that you have someone there <laughs> with you, right with you by your side, taking care of you, helping you get through each day, making the very, very best out of each day. I hope there's nothing weighing on your minds or your hearts, pulling your attention away from where you want it to be or from where it should be. I love y'all to bits, to bits, to bits, hugs all around, and I keep you in my thoughts and my prayers every single day. And with all that said, I'll just say, until next time, <laughs> don't forget Bobby tomorrow night, Facebook Live. Y'all take good, good gear. Bye-bye.